Firstly, I would like to congratulate SOXO for organizing the very apt and timely International Public Employment Symposium. Thank you for inviting me to share some thoughts on entrepreneurship. I think it has been said that there are three types of people in this world. People who watch things happen, people who make things happen, and people who sometimes wonder what happened. Entrepreneurs are people who make things happen because entrepreneurs create wealth, jobs, they create business opportunities, and they pay taxes. So entrepreneurs do make things happen for their countries and their societies. We have also come across different types of entrepreneurs. There are those from family businesses. We have also come across social entrepreneurs as well as intrapreneurs who are entrepreneurs within an organization, managers who develop an entrepreneurial mindset. Hence, they are called intrapreneurs. We also see today a rise in digital entrepreneurs and women entrepreneurs. So all these different types of entrepreneurs make a difference by creating opportunities and by developing innovation. If I may share, there are several key success factors for entrepreneurial leadership. Entrepreneurs are known for their diligence, their hard work, their initial sacrifice, their clear vision and their imagination, as well as their perseverance and passion. Entrepreneurs sometimes can be described as VIP people, but the V stands for vision, I for imagination, and P for perseverance. So we need entrepreneurs to have vision, imagination, and perseverance. There are some other entrepreneurial attributes that we should recognize. The three A's, agility, adaptability, ability. The three I's, innovation, industrialness, and impact on society, leaving behind a legacy. The three T's, talent, trust, transformation. And the three C's, capability, collaboration, and communication. Because entrepreneurs who are successful are able to communicate and collaborate well. Today, we live in an increasingly VUCA world, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And because of these, we need to have strategic responses to move forward. By having a clear vision, a strategic mission, having clear strategic plans, and strategic thinking to overcome the challenges of the VUCA world. During this pandemic, entrepreneurs need to have survival skills and survival strategies. They need to ensure that their businesses can survive in a period where a lot of businesses are not able to operate. So cash flow is king. Entrepreneurs must ensure that their businesses have sufficient cash flow to survive. Increasingly in today's world, we see that entrepreneurs need to give back to society and to build a lasting legacy for themselves. And hence, we have many entrepreneurs who have now established charity foundations that will focus on corporate social responsibility. And increasingly, many of these new foundations pivot more to the sustainable development goals so that businesses of today can be sustainable, responsive, and inclusive. We also see that today, entrepreneurs look at business at more than just the profit motive. It is not just making money. But make no mistake, making money is essential to business success. But business needs to be more than just making money. Businesses and entrepreneurs need to contribute to their community and to the society that they operate in, especially during these pandemic times. So we see many people now contributing to food banks, contributing and making donations to hospitals and homes to equip them with personal protective equipment, PPEs, and so on. 
Now here in Malaysia and in many of our Asian countries, we have seen that many entrepreneurs actually started off as family businesses. And if I can cite some example, we have the YTL Group, Genting, or the KRK of Kuala Lumpur, Kepong Group, and the IOI Group. Many of these enterprises are now into their third generation. They sort of debunk a theory that the third generation sometimes loses it all. It has been a story that the first generation create and build the business, the second generation expand it, but the third generation may free to it all. But we have seen that in the success story of YTL, Genting, KLK, the third generation are now coming into the business and assuming key leadership positions. We also see this in the Quark Group as well. And the Quark Group has donated substantially to many charity causes, especially through the Quark Foundation, they have set up many scholarships. We also see that in the Royal Selangor International Group, which is over a 100-year-old company, and not many Malaysian companies have a 100-year-old history. We also see that in the Bajaya Group, in Tan Chong, and Tan Chong is interesting because the grandson of the founder of Tan Chong has gone on to set up Grab, which is now a global unicorn. Some successful entrepreneurs, family businesses, unfortunately, do not have a successor to take over their business. The case of Public Bank is one example where the founder, chairman, Tan Sri Te Hong Piao, do not have a family member who would succeed him. So in cases like this, they need to institutionalize professional management into their companies to enable it to be able to grow and to develop and to be sustained. We have also seen today the rise and emergence of a lot of new first-generation entrepreneurs. People at Tan Sri Tony Fernandez that have set up Air Asia. He has got no family history of business. His father is a doctor, the mother a teacher, but they have, he has gone on to build a very successful business. We've seen that also in Dr. Sri Nazir Raza, in Mr. Go Peng Wei, the founder of Silver Lake Group that was ranked by Forbes magazine as the first technology billionaire in Malaysia. And they, he comes from a poor family and yet has emerged to be a successful technology billionaire. So today, we need entrepreneurs who are able to have the three R's in this challenging time. Reset, renew, reinvent. They need to be able to reset their company directions. They need to be able to renew their business portfolios and to reinvent their business models to stay successful ahead. If I can share a lesson from one of the leading professors in Harvard Business School, Professor Rosabeth Moss Kenter, who has popularized her four F's concept that successful entrepreneurs need to be fast, focused, flexible, and friendly. And this is, I think, the key success factors that many entrepreneurs need to recognize. Fast means they have to respond very rapidly to changing situations. They need to have a very clear, focused strategy and not be distracted by many other things. They need to be flexible in the sense that when things change, when there are big new obstacles ahead, they have to be flexible in their approaches and strategies. And they need to be friendly, building alliances with many other people so that they can grow their business. Also, for family businesses, the need to have professional managers, as I had mentioned earlier, becomes very important. Very many successful family businesses have what they have called family offices set up. And the family offices will comprise the different members of the family who meet once in a while, at least three, four times a year, to set the company's direction. But they also have a family constitution that spells out what each member of the family can do, who can get involved in the business, 
And people who are not involved in that business, how are they able to benefit from that business? So having that family office and family constitution would be, I think, important for family businesses. So today we have seen, as I mentioned earlier, the emergence of social entrepreneurs and social enterprises. And these are purpose-driven organizations who do things more than just making money and who, at the end of the day, want to help the poor and disadvantaged and also to do good in society. They are people who are motivated to make an impact on their community. And finally, entrepreneurs need to relentlessly pursue the three E's, excellence, ethics, and execution. It has been said that if your business is not excellent, you are not able to compete. And all business leaders need to have ethical leadership. And finally, the execution part is so important. You need to execute, execute, execute well. So in conclusion, I'd like to end by saying that in these pandemic times, entrepreneurs must have courage, determination, and resilience. Thank you very much.